Beach fishing is just so appealing. Watching the sun rise in the east and watching it set in the west, especially while you're catching your fish with the waves slapping at your feet, is just what makes this form of fishing so appealing. But if you rock up to the beach for the first time, you don't know where you'd throw a line or where to throw a bait or a lure. Exactly what do you do? Well, that's exactly what we're going to show you today. I'm going to get the drone up in the air and show you what it looks like from above. But more importantly, I'm going to show you what that looks like from an eye level as well, so you can pick it yourself. And hang around to the end because it's important if you've got a family to be able to get the kids in the beach fishing as well. And that takes a really special kind of gutter because little kids, and you'll see my daughter in these clips as young as seven years old catching as many fish as a big brother's because she's able to just throw a line into the beach and catch a heap of whiting. But it does take a special spot. So stick around the end and we'll cover that as well. Firstly, we have to understand how waves work. Waves are nothing more than energy moving through the water. But this energy is making those water molecules move up and down as the energy moves through that water. It's exactly the same way as a Mexican wave works when you're at the footy. Everyone throws their arms up in the air and then drops them back down again in unison, which makes it appear to be a wave. And that's exactly what's happening with the water. What actually makes a wave break is as that wave starts to hit shallower water, the wave starts to push up a little bit because the water's getting shallow and then the bottom of the wave has got a lot of resistance in it so it slows down and the top of the wave will fall over itself which is how a wave actually breaks. Now look, sorry about my terrible artwork here, I'm no graphic designer but as you can see here in the diagram, the waves are just rolling through when they're in deep water and as they start to hit the shallow stuff, they lift up, the top of the wave falls over and the wave breaks. So in this footage here, we're just looking at a standard beach where you've got waves breaking out the back where they hit the shallower water, and that broken wave or white water is just rolling all the way into shore. What this tells me is that we've got shallow water all the way into the beach. But let's look at another section of the beach here. The waves break out the back, but then they will, you'll watch them reform again, and they won't break again until they hit the shallow water at the shore. What's actually causing this is that there's deep water between where the wave broke out the back and, and between the shoreline, and we call this a gutter. A gutter will run horizontally along a beach, a few hundred metres long or even a few kilometres long. But there will always be deep water between that back bank and between that front bank. You'll see the waves breaking on the back bank, reforming, then breaking on that front bank. So you've got to try to get your bait or your lure into that deeper water where the fish are going to be. And these, these gutters will hold anything. If they're deep enough, they'll hold sharks, mulloway, uh, salmon, tailor, and even the, the deep ones as well as the shallow ones will hold brim, whitey, dark, flatter, just about anything. So gutters are a fantastic place to fish. But one of my favourite places to fish are holes, and holes are a little bit different. Like I said, a gutter will run horizontally along a beach, and they can be kilometres long. But holes are a lot smaller. They're little sections of the beach where the waves actually run all the way into the shore and break hard on the beach. And they're the best holes to get. And even a really good hole, like the one that we've got here in this example, it has no back break. So therefore it's got waves rolling all the way in and not breaking until they hit the shore. And what this does is it digs up a lot of worms and pippies and it carves out a little section of the beach too. You might have walked along the beach once or driven along the beach and found a little steep section of sand at low tide. And what's happened there, it's usually deep water all the way in where the wave breaks and churns away sections of that beach. And that's usually from a hole. So now let's put the drone away and get down onto the beach itself and have a look from eye level at gutters and holes. And you can see here where I'm just throwing this rod out and cranking the thing back in. I'm fishing a gutter because there's waves breaking out the back and they flatten right out. And in this particular day, it's got to not a lot of surf, so it's almost like glass until it lands again at my feet. This is a typical gutter. The waves will break out the back, reform when they hit that deep water, then break again at your feet. And this is what that gutter looks like from the shore 
You can see it's cut away at some of the beach and those waves are breaking fairly close to the shore. If we had a less of a swell on today, this would be the perfect gutter because those waves would break hard on the beach. So as usual, Cody and I are fishing exactly the same gutter and he's the one catching all the fish. Love your work. Yeah, a few casts and we're in. Look, so whether you're fishing holes or gutters, doesn't matter. Look for that darker water. Look for where those waves are rolling in, maybe breaking out the back and then reforming and you've got dark water with nice formed waves rolling all the way to shore. I prefer holes. They seem to concentrate fish into a smaller area. So I love fishing holes. And the hole in this example where it didn't have any waves breaking out the back at all is just perfect because that wave will roll all the way in and break on the sand and churn up all the pippies. And that's exactly what you need. So as we look at it again, you can see how the waves just roll all the way into shore. I just love these particular spots. But with kids, it's very similar. I'm looking for a gutter or a hole that's really, really close to shore where waves are actually breaking on the bare sand. So I can give the kids little rods, not big surf rods, and they can just throw them out, even if it's five or 10 meters, if they can throw the bait that far, they'll actually catch a lot of fish. Actually get them standing away from the edge a little bit when you find these gutters because a lot of the whiting and dart will be hard at their feet. So let's look at a clip I took a few years ago because my kids are growing up a bit now. This is on a trip we did to Fraser Island and we got some beach worms and some pippies and we just threw them in a little gutter. Summer's seven years old, her friend's about the same age and the two girls are catching just as many fish as their big brothers who have been doing this for years. So check this out. What we've done here, we've stopped here with the kids for a bit of a fish and it's always difficult when you're first time coming to the surf to know where to find the fish. If we look just up here to the right hand side of the beach, we've got waves breaking out the back and they're rolling all the way into shore and not reforming or anything, just white water rolling all the way in. But as we look over to the left hand side, the waves are still breaking out the back, but as they get closer to shore, they'll actually reform and break just on the bare sand right in front of our feet. So if you're watching reform and just break on the sand there, this is not a deep or a, or a big gutter by any stretch of the imagination, but that's what we're looking for. The reason why the waves are reforming is there's deep water between the back bank and the shoreline. And for whiting and dart in particular, which is a species that you'll catch all year round here, the fact that the, the waves are breaking on bare sand and churning up pippies and worms, we'll find the whiting and dart cruising in the shallow water just here. Gutters that are just basically right at your feet, you don't have to get the kids fishing in real big surf gear. This is just a seven foot brim rod with a little spin tackle in it. The only problem you're gonna have with spin gear is getting the sand in it. So you just gotta keep the, these out of the sand if you can. Rod, rod holders are ideal. The only rig we've got is a little bit of red tubing and a red bead which attracts the whiting in the dark. Just a running sinker, which is not a big sinker because we're not casting out very far and either a pippy or a worm bait for these fish. But this is the ideal outfit for the kids. It's not heavy, they can cast it really easily. It's just got a light four pound braided line on this outfit, you can go a bit heavier if you like. But these shallow gutters are right at your feet, you just got to flick the rod out a little bit. Yeah, look, it's as simple as that. Look for that darker looking water that have waves rolling in and you know it's deep because it's got to be shallow for that wave to be breaking. And look, if you've got any questions, please give me a comment, send a remark, give me a like if you like it. 
and subscribe if you like the channel. And here's a little clip up here as well on how to catch beach worms if you want to get into beach fishing. Get out there and have a go. And one of the best, most relaxing forms of fishing is doing it on the beach and nothing better when you're even catching a few fish while you're doing it.